Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name is Jared from Jared Boas Photography. Um, if you're new to the channel, it'd be great if you liked, uh, commented on this video and subscribe to the channel. It'll help out a lot. Um, I do a lot of photography tips, um, adventure videos, um, getting into some gear review stuff today-ish, I guess. Um, and hopefully some photography uh, editing, like, you know, post-processing stuff in the future. Um, so that out of the way, um, I want to kind of do a camera gear video, um, I guess, review thing. Uh, just kind of go over the camera gear that I'm using regularly, uh, the accessories that I kind of use on a regular basis, um, camera, lenses, all that stuff. I'll tell you what kind of stuff I'm recording all this on. And um, yeah, we'll kind of get into that. Um, I think we kind of it would be fun. Um, I haven't done one like that. So we'll kind of see how it goes and just uh, have some fun with it, okay? All right, so I figure we'll work from the outside in. Um, so we'll just start with the bag. Oh boy, there's a lot of stuff in there. So this is my camera bag. Um, I use an Osprey uh, Kestrel 38. I've been using this for probably about a year and a half. Um, it is probably the most comfortable bag. I think Osprey makes the, the most comfortable hiking bags. Um, it, uh, it carries the weight um, incredibly well. Uh, it has enough room for pretty much everything that I need. The workflow is a little clunky just because it's not a dedicated like photography back backpack, but I've used so many um, camera bags that are on the market. I've tried out a lot and not to say that, that they're not great, but they just don't fit like my body type that well, at least me specifically. I'm kind of weird looking anyway. So um, it's, uh, yeah, so this one really carries the weight um, when I'm hiking all day long. Um, I'm rarely sore or anything like that um, when I use it. So I really just enjoyed the heck out of using it. Um, there's lots of back pockets and everything on there. Um, so we can just kind of start from the uh, outside and kind of work our way in. I'll pull, use my camera, I'll pull out my camera insert, show you what I have in there and kind of go from there. Um, so uh, on the outside, um, you have two water bottle pockets right here. Um, I don't know if you can see it better this way or not. Um, we'll kind of take a look on the video there and I'll see if this looks better or not. But anyways, um, I use my I put my tripod on one side and water bottle on the other. So they're pretty handy, they're right there and then they also have a little like front facing thing so you can kind of slick, uh, put the uh, water bottle in this way if it's easier to grab that way for you. Um, so with the tripod, you just, uh, I just, uh, there's, a, there's some straps on the outside here. Um, so that secures it pretty well. Um, and I can pull out the tripod and kind of get things going for my shoots or whatever. Let's put that back there for right now. Um, so on the, I guess this is the front. Um, on the front side, there's a pocket. So there's like a stuff pocket. Um, I keep a um, first aid kit uh, right here. Um, so yeah, just great stuff for hiking. You know, I work in the healthcare field, so I kind of built this out a little bit, um, so I kind of know what's in here. I put in some quality stuff. So if you're buying these, these uh, this brand, uh, Adventure Medical Kits, they make great stuff. Um, and I just kind of tweaked it a little bit for my needs. So yeah, great stuff all the way around there. Um, there's two really comfortable hip, uh, hip belts right here. This is so, so graceful. Um, hip belts, super comfortable. Um, there's two big pockets that can fit. I fit. I have a um, Google Pixel uh, cell phone. Fits perfectly in there. Uh, also, you can fit, you know, granola bars, power bars, whatever. Um, on the other side, I have um, a multi-tool that I might switch out for a smaller one, but I have a Leatherman Wave that I just carry around out of habit, really, and it's kind of heavy, but um, if I need it, it's there. And then I have a Peak Design um, little tripod tool. Uh, in case I have to like, you know, screw anything down or kind of cinch anything down on my tripod if anything gets loose, um, which rarely happens, but it's nice to have. I've had it happen before on older tripods. Um, and then the top has like the, uh, it's, I guess it's called the lid. The uh, lid has a top pocket here, which is again for accessories. I have an accessory pouch, which we'll go into in a little bit. And then I have my bandana that I pretty much wear all the time when I'm out hiking around. Um, pretty big um, top pocket here. Um, you can fit a lot of stuff. I fit that stuff. Um, I, uh, I use it actually as a pouch for like some snacks and stuff. 
Uh, I use it also, I'm a type one diabetic, so I'll, a lot of times I'll put my insulin pouch and stuff in here. No problem whatsoever. Um, so yeah, that's a kind of a quick, quick and dirty on the outside. And then the underside, there's another little pocket here, which I actually have my rocket blower. I think this is, is an actual rocket blower and it's nice to have just in case things get a little dusty and uh, you know, in case you get any like um, dust or whatever on your sensor, you can just blow it off pretty quick. So yeah, that uh, the pocket on the bottom is pretty sweet. And then uh, we'll move into the, uh, into the inside of the bag in just a second here. Okay, so like I said, it's called a Kestrel 38. That means it's a 38 liter bag. Um, so really like I got this one because when I'm like flying and stuff, like I can fit this in the overhead compartment and it pretty much meets like, I think it pretty much meets um, the FAA regulations as far as like overhead storage and all that stuff. Um, I haven't been asked to take it off or anything like that. So as far as like traveling with on a plane, even though we're in kind of like a weird travel time right now, no one's really flying that much. Um, when things kind of get back to somewhat of, you know, or some level of normalcy, um, I like to take, I can take this on a plane, no problem. Um, so anyways, yeah, so 38 liters, lots of room. Um, this is my camera insert. Um, I'll go into that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, lots of, uh, Lots of room to keep stuff. I kind of keep my, um, I have a puffy jacket down here at the bottom. Um, and then at the very bottom, there's a bag. It's, it's built for like a quick overnight, like backpacking thing. So there's a, I, there's an area for um, like a sleeping bag pouch. I use it to hold my, um, let me get the uh, little clips off here real quick. Um, I use it to hold um, my photography gloves. Um, these are from a company called Valorette. Um, they're super warm and then the fingers kind of come apart and so you can put your finger out and you know use your dials and um, everything on your camera comfortably and then put your fingers back in and keep your hands nice and warm when it gets cold. Um, I use those in the late fall and winter. Um, I have a North Face beanie, um, uh, again for cold weather photography, which I do a lot of typically or try to. Um, and then I have like my rain shell um, for, you know, cold weather and wind and rain and all that fun stuff. So I keep that all down here in the bottom compartment. Um, it zips right up and then I put my um, camera insert right in the back and everything just secures really nicely in, in this bag. So uh, let's get into the, the nitty gritty stuff. Um, we'll go over my camera gear and all my accessories and all that stuff. All right, so the first thing I'll talk about is my camera insert for my backpack. Um, I've used a lot of different ones. Um, this is from a company called Wandered. Um, W-A-N-D-R-D, I think is how they spell it. Um, this is the uh, Wandered Pro Camera Cube. Um, I'll put links uh, in the description so you, if you wanna check this stuff out, you can. I don't get any kickbacks or anything like that. Like I don't have affiliate links or any of that stuff, but if you're interested in checking out the gear, I'll just put some links to the stuff that I'm talking about. So if you wanna check it out, you can. Um, so anyways, um, I've gone through a few different brands. Um, everyone has their, you know, pros and cons. This one so far has done really well for me because I really like the long and skinny side of it. Um, cause it fits like backpacking backpacks a little bit better, um, for me. Um, since I'm using like a hiking backpack for my camera gear. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm, you know, where I'm going with my stuff anyways. Uh, so, um, a few of the other ones I've used have been more square. This one's nice and long and it's easier to pull out of the bag. Um, it has a few different compartments. So we can open this up. So you can take a look here um, and I'll do like a close up video a shot of the stuff and kind of so you can kind of see the layout. But it has room for my camera. I have one, two, and then the third lens is on my camera body. Um, area for some accessories, um, some lens cloths, and then just like a little accessory, like cords and stuff here on the top that I use from another camera bag. Kind of Frankenstein did a little bit, but you know, that's kind of how it goes sometimes. Um, so there's plenty of room for everything that I need in here. Um, I can zip it up fairly easily. The, the zippers stick a little bit, but other than that, it's pretty comfortable to, it, it's been pretty comfortable to use. So yeah, it works pretty well for hiking around and you know, putting it in the backpack quickly and taking it out quickly. Um, I don't do a lot of like run and gun photography, so I'm usually going to a location, setting up, 
pulling this out. So there's not a lot of, I don't have like a really fast workflow or anything. Um, so yeah, it, it, it works well for what I'm using it for. So I'll talk to you about my tripod next. I use a Really Right Stuff TFC14. Uh, it's made with carbon fiber. Has one, two, three, I guess three um, extendable like sections on each leg. Moves really well. Uh, super light, great for hiking, great for traveling. I use a Acrotech uh, ball head. These things are bomb proof. Um, they say as far as like tripods or just gear in general, like buy nice or buy twice. That's very apparent in tripod quality from what I've seen. I've gone through a lot of tripods. This is probably the end all be all for me. I don't really see myself buying anything else than this. It's I've shot in a bunch of different situations, a bunch of different like, you know, inclement weather. It just keeps it keeps on checking, trucking and everything else. It's really a, it's really a great tripod and it's super light. Um, the Carbon fiber is very sturdy. It barely flexes. It's it's one of the shorter ones. It's not like eye height. A lot of photographers look kind of like it like right up to their eyeballs. I haven't really necessarily needed that. Sometimes like I can get a little hunched over if I'm using it because it's a little bit shorter than I am. But otherwise, like I've had a great uh, experience using this. Really right stuff makes an incredible product and I would recommend this to anybody. So let's talk about what camera I'm using. I started shooting on film. I learned in high school when I was, I learned on my mom's Canon, and I can't remember the model name, but I started learning to shoot, uh, you know, I started learning photography on a old uh, Canon camera back in 2003. I developed, I started learning to develop my own black and white film. So I shot on Canon um, for a long time. I went to like a Rebel, and then I think I went to one of the D series ones. I think it was a 50D after that. So I shot that, then I went to a 6D, and then um, I decided to switch to Nikon for a short period of time. I did that for probably like six months to a year, and then I finally went full bore, switched over to mirrorless, and got the Sony a7R III, and that's what I've been shooting on for the last two and a half years. And I can tell you that this is the best camera I've ever used, and I have no no plans on switching or upgrading the you know R4 or anything like that. I feel like the quality is incredible. Um, while the file sizes are, you know, large, it's a 42 megapixel camera. Um, they're pretty manageable as far as like my computer and my hard drive space go. Um, the dynamic range is incredible. Just everything about it's amazing. I also have an L bracket on it. I think this one is from Sunway Photo. So one of the cheaper ones, but it works fine. I haven't had any, you know, problems with it. The other thing I like about the camera, um, it has the, art, not, artic not fully articulating, but the, uh, flip out screen. Um, it doesn't fully articulate like the new cameras do, but um, it does what I need it to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's an incredible camera. It gives me incredible image quality. I can crop in super close with 42 megapixels of resolution, even on low light. The low light performance is amazing. There's, I, I can't say enough good things about this camera and I, if I broke it today, I would buy another R3. Um, I know the R4 has some upgrades and I think it's, you know, 60 something megapixels and this and that, but this thing just hits all the right notes for me. Uh, I can't say enough good things. This is the best camera I've ever owned. All right, so we'll talk about lenses. Another fun thing that everyone likes to talk about and, you know, talk about their favorite lenses and all that fun stuff. So let's see. So probably over the last few years, the one the lens I use the I've used the most is the Sony 16 to uh, 35 f 2.8. Uh, it's a great lens. Well, I don't know what else to tell you about that. It's the quality is amazing. It's super sharp, basically from corner to corner for me. I usually shoot around like f f8 f11 for the most part. Has incredible um, low light performance for like astrophotography. I've done a lot with this lens, um, but it's starting to kind of work, not totally work its way out of my bag, but I'm using it less. Um, I've been kind of going more toward the mid range and telephoto um, ranges uh, for my photography. Um, I feel like those have been kind of more, it's been opening up more creative avenues for me as far as like composition, and I've been kind of branching out a little bit more in my photography. Um, but if you want an iconic, wide angle scene like this this is the best wide angle ones i've ever used um the canon 16 to 35 you know f 
2.8 USM 2 or something was really good. I used that when I was with Canon, and this one is on par, if not better, than that one, personally. Like, I had a great time using that one. This one is just incredibly sharp, incredibly well-made. It's a great wide-angle lens, but um, I'm starting to kind of move away from like the big, epic, wide-angle um, scenes in my photography. I'll still take this along on a lot of my trips, but I'm starting to kind of shift away from that a little bit. Um, which brings me to my next lens, um, one that I've been using a lot more, is the Sony 100-400, um, I think it's 4.5 to 5.6 on the aperture. This thing is incredible. Um, it's heavy. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it for backpacking, but if I'm going on a trip, this thing's coming along, most likely. Um, it's, the range on it's amazing. It's great for wildlife, really compressing, like, faraway shots getting really creative, you know, lighting and, you know, every other kind of composition you want to get um, that isn't like right in your, like right in front of your face, obvious. Uh, it's great for like in, really intimate landscapes. Um, it's an incredible lens. I bought it to shoot Firefall a few years ago and I thought, well, I might, maybe I'll return it after I'm done or something, but this thing has earned a spot in my bag and I'm never going to let it go. I love this lens. It's great. If, you know, it, it's definitely this one. And then my most recent lens that I bought, was, it's um, the, it's not a G Master. It's the um, 24 to 105. It's more like a mid-range um, to like small, like short telephoto, I guess. It's 24 to 105, um, Sony G, not the G Master. But it really gives me a wide range of borderline wide angle to kind of cropped in um, like mid-range to long range telephoto. Uh, which opens up, like I was saying, like a lot more creative avenues for me. Get, not getting the obvious shot, really kind of looking around, looking around, seeing what the light's doing, being able to kind of isolate subjects, get more intimate, smaller, um, smaller scenes, I guess. And that's kind of where I've experienced what I've experienced my photography doing recently. What I've been more inspired by, um, just not looking at the huge, you know. Uh, obvious shot but trying to find more you know creative compositions more compositions unique to me so that's kind of where this comes in um, so yeah those three lenses though they're most likely in my bag um, pretty much all the time the 16 to 35 is kind of working its way out a little bit not to say that I'm not going to take it places but um, definitely the 24 to 105 and then the 100 to 400 those cover an incredible range, and with the three of them, I have basically every focal range that I need covered. I know people really like like the ultra wide angles, like the 12s and 14 millimeters, um, and those are great too. Those are just things I didn't buy, and I don't really think that I need them at this point, um, especially with these focal ranges covered. Um, yeah, so if you're looking for lenses, for Sony anyways, these are incredible lenses. I can't say good, enough good stuff about them. They all have their, um, you know, ups and downs and pros and cons and everything. You kind of depend on what you want to, it depends on what you want to do with your photography. But these lenses, um, especially the 24 to 105 and the 100 to 400, incredible lenses. And the, thir and the 16 to 35 is one of the best wide angle lenses I've ever used. So amazing lenses. Um, yeah, so those are the ones I'm shooting with the most. And actually, not the most, those are the only ones I'm shooting with. All right, so uh, last part of the video, I guess, will be um, just kind of the accessories and stuff that I have laying around. Um, so we can start with my filter kit. I have this little filter wallet I got on Amazon. It's pretty cheap. I think it's uh, one, two, three, see? Um, so yeah, I, I don't use a lot of filters. Um, most of the time I'm either using a circular polarizer or a three-stop ND. Uh, the brand I use is Breakthrough Photography. They have, um, in my experience, the best filters that I've used. There's no color cast. The uh, quality of the filters is incredible. The um, like They're made really well. They're very durable. Uh, I haven't had any issues with any of that. Uh, they do their job perfectly. They're a little pricier, but when it comes to the stuff, you want to make sure you're buying quality products. So I would say definitely uh, check them out. They're a great uh, company. They sponsor a lot of photographers and everything else. They just make a great product and they've found a spot in my camera bag, no doubt. Um, so yeah, so they fit nicely in this little uh, filter pouch. 
I have a couple new little accessory patches coming. Um, I ordered them from Shimoda, so we'll kind of see how that works out. But so far, this has worked out pretty well. Um, next up, I have my accessory patch that I keep in like the top of my bag. This just kind of holds like a bunch of batteries and cords and everything else. Um, I have some chargers here. I have my um, camera batteries hanging out right here. Some extra lens cloths. Nothing too crazy, but just necessary stuff that you keep on uh that you keep in your bag with you that you need um extra cords like i said chargers batteries all that fun stuff right in here um so yeah this works out pretty well for uh sticking on the top of my uh backpack um i always bring a portable power bank uh this is from anchor um they have a, they have another one i'm actually looking at i forget the name of it and i forget the, the model name but i'll look it up and put it in the uh, description but um, I take this backpacking or on any trip. So if I'm out and I need a quick charge on my camera or my phone or something, this can do like a several charges for a phone or, um, you know, charge my camera batteries and stuff. So if something dies, I usually, you know, I have multiple batteries, so I usually have backups and everything. But um, just in case I'm out for a really long time, like I have a um, option to charge everything just to make sure I get the shots that I want to get and then get back to wherever I'm going to charge up my batteries at night. Um, but yeah, so having something like this, some sort of power bank um, with you is always super helpful if you know, you're out all day. I mean, the great thing about the new mirrorless cameras is the battery life on these things is great. The, the um, Sony a7R 3 the battery life blasts me all day. I heard, I never used the a7R 2 but heard the battery everyone says the battery life is terrible i have not experienced that at all with this a7r3 the battery life's amazing um it's gotten me through every shoot nothing's died early on me plus i have you know three batteries and that lasts me well over you know that lasts me multiple days of shooting um yeah so it works out pretty well um then the last thing i have my um sd card wallet um there's only a couple in there right now because i'm using my other ones but um, this is from Think Tank. Um, there's another one that I'm kind of looking at. Uh, it's a hard, like a hard shell one. But yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Holds all my uh, CF, or my, my CF cards, my SD cards in here. I can have quite a few of them. They're important to have backups of once if something fails or dies or you lose one or something. It's always good to have multiple if you're going on a trip. So that's kind of the accessories um, that I'm using the most of. Um, yeah. Hey, so thanks for watching. Um, I really appreciate you uh, kind of chugging along here and seeing all the gear that I'm using. Um, these videos are kind of fun. Everyone kind of likes to talk about gear here and there. I don't do it a lot, but it's fun to do and kind of go through everything. My bag evolves yearly, if not bi-yearly. Um, I'm always switching out gear for new stuff. So, you know, maybe I'll try to do these like, you know, once a year um, if things change or maybe as things change, who knows. Um, yeah, you know, I, I had a good time kind of going through this stuff. And hopefully uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can leave me a comment. I try to get back to you. Um, but yeah, if you did like the video, please like it. Please comment, please subscribe. Um, it's only gonna help the channel out and you know, I have a lot more stuff coming up. Um, I just wanna keep going with this and uh, I'm really enjoying making content for the channel. Um, it gives me another facet uh, of my photography to kind of show you. And uh, I just really enjoyed doing it. So yeah, if you could like, comment, subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.